This is a new laser cutter that showed up in the makerspace this week. Believe it or not, it doesn't really look a whole lot like many of the diode laser cutters that we've ever used before. It's called the Spider A1800L. Pricing is going to vary a bit depending on when you're buying it, exactly what kit you have, but this exact setup that we have right now is a 10 watt laser head and retailing for about $400. And the most distinct thing about this particular model is that it's collapsible. What are your first impressions? Uh, setup was a breeze. Um, literally it popped out of the box and there were like two screws. It's really light. And it has a very nice size cutting bed for the price. The price is very good, um, but uh, it has a nice size work surface for the uh, open frame design. Yeah. Um, I also like how on the far side, uh, there's only a one sided frame and it folds. Um, so you can mount this on a desk or a work area that you're going to use as a dual purpose and it literally just one little screw and it's set up and ready to go. Yeah, it feels kind of like... It does not lock. Well, it's smooth was the point I was going to say. Uh, the thing that I like is now you have your work area. Yeah, no, this just fell. Yeah. Does it lock? It doesn't lock. It does lock. You gotta tighten the oh, screw. Oh, okay. Yeah, use a screwdriver. Which it came with. Ooh, it came with one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so like, okay. okay. That's a little inconvenient, but not that big of a deal. Well, a thumb screw would be better, but it's not that bad. And it is very lightweight. Mm -hmm. It's locked. Ah! Easy. Amazing. Oh, also first impression, I think this is for focusing it, which is not my favorite focusing method. I do like it better when it has a little metal thing that pops off and it's all built into the head. Yeah, I feel like it's not that hard of a thing to add to, to laser realistically, because in my mind it's not. I don't know, but I don't know but if that changes the price point of manufacturing to a point that it adds $100. All right. Should we give it a whirl? Let's do it. Okay. Experience tells me that engraving is going to be the strong suit of a 10 watt diode laser cutter. So that seems like a fair place to start. So I'm just engraving my name onto this eighth inch thick plywood. To focus this, the manual said to use that acrylic block to get the laser head positioned five millimeters above the work surface. Only our acrylic block wasn't five millimeters. So I just went ahead and did it with a ruler instead, um, which wasn't particularly difficult, just of note. So I'm engraving my name in a couple of different fonts. So I'm starting with like bold and then a scripty font and then a finer font to just see what we get. I could immediately tell that I probably could have cranked my settings up a bit higher, but that being said, it was super even in the engraves and it handled the fine lines perfect. Adding cross hatching would only improve the engrave quality too. Okay, up next to try something a little bit different, I wanna try cutting some leather on this. In my experience, diode laser cutters are fantastic for leather because most leather just doesn't take that much power to get through it cleanly. Um, plus this laser has the extended bed size, which you know is pretty versatile when you're dealing with leather or fabric of any kind for that matter. And for settings, all leather's a little bit different, but I started with a 20 speed and 100 power to see how it goes. I'm gonna use my stitchless wallet design that I put together earlier in the summer to test this because it's a test cut, but then also I can just make myself a wallet. And if you wanna try this design too yourself, it's available on our website to purchase and download. Now, unfortunately this, <laughs> my settings didn't get all the way through. Um, so I lowered my speed a bit and it still didn't get all the way through. I don't know, I honestly didn't get the, the settings perfectly honed in on the leather, which isn't a reflection of the laser necessarily. All leather's a bit different and I just wanted to move on to the next test cut. But what is a reflection of the laser cutter is how smoothly it handled all the curves on this. It really like glided over the pattern, which I was really happy to see. For the final test cut, I'm gonna cut a living hinge bow out of eighth inch thick plywood. Um, this is a good test cut because it's a lot of really precise cuts all lined up next to one another. So we'll be able to really see how this performs. I'm doing three passes at a 10 speed full power. And it looks like it's getting through, but we won't really know till the very end.
And that looks super clean. I think that warrants a ta-da! <laughs> Everything cut perfectly. Okay, final thoughts in the form of a pros and cons list. Pros. Right. Pros. Yes. Um, I really like this, swings out of the way. And I also like the extended bed size. You could do a cutting board on this or a large bar board and engrave it with no problem whatsoever. And there's no reason, if you're just looking at engraved cutting boards, to get anything more in depth than this. Super lightweight, and I think that that comes with a lot of versatility. I agree. You can like pick this up and place it on something if it's like a larger... Like coffee table, coffee table or, or something. a conference table if you want to put a logo in the middle of it after you built it. Yeah. Um, it's equipped for air assist. That is a pro. Um, mm -hmm. It does not come with the air assist, so that is also a con. But We'll start with the pros, though. But it is equipped for air assist. Yeah. A pro is that it's a 10-watt laser head, and that is going to do a, a great job at engraves. Um, I think the biggest pro on this machine, though, is the price. Yeah, the price um, is really accessible. Cons. It's only a 10 watt head, so it can cut quarter inch material, but it will cut it slowly and yeah. might take two passes. It, I would say it probably definitely would take two passes, and it's going to be very smoky. Because another con is that it's an open frame design, which I. It's a common design for It's a these common diodes, design, but it requires but a tent or some sort of exhaust solution. And we took, a, sure. we took a look at their website, and they don't seem seem to offer something that is just custom fit for this. So in theory, that means you're going to be kind of on your own to find a tent solution that will fit this. And because it has that really large bed size. Um, I'm sure there's one on Amazon. I'm sure there is, but it's going to become a consideration anyway. Um, cons, cons, cons. I don't know. I think we kind of covered it. I think so too. All right. So <laughs> star rating. Out of four? Uh, no, sorry. So star rating out of five stars? What are you going to say? I'm going to go with a solid four. Um, okay. I think that the price is great. It will handle most jobs. The um, only real negative to me is the 10 watt head and that they're, you have to pay extra if you want a 20 watt. Yeah, I mean, you can upgrade it, which is nice, but... The 20 watt head comes with all the great things of the 10 watt head. It's just a little bit more oomph. And they don't offer it as a package price with the 20. They offer it with a package price with a 5 or a 10. You have to just buy a separate head. So no matter what, if you want the 20, you're stuck with the 10. Hmm. Okay. And I let's be say, honest, the engraving quality isn't going to be that different. So you're probably going to be swapping it out every time you want to engrave something. Yeah, probably not. Um, I think I was going to say 4 as well because for all the cons on the list, because there are cons with this machine, I give it a 4 even still, because the affordability factor is just so high that it kind of makes up for that. I think um, to get an equivalent machine that'll do more, you're going to be looking at at least $500 more. Yeah. I can't think of any reason not to buy this, too, if it's in your price point and you know you're going to be engraving and it can handle what you're looking to do. Like, there's nothing about this that I'd be like, well, don't get it because dot, dot, dot. That isn't consistent with any other open frame diode laser anyway. Nope. And for the person with a small shop, this is a great space saving solution with how it folds. Yeah. I think it's a solid four. Yeah. I think if you are going to be doing laser cutting, maybe like once or twice a month, but you really don't need a permanent setup, this is great because you can just fold it up and tuck it away because um, it's collapsible and lightweight, which is really nice too. Like we use lasers daily. So, like, needing to collapse our laser cutters and tuck them away isn't something that's going to rate high on our... We're going to use it more frequently, though. You can leave it set up and just collapse it on the occasion that you need to use that work area as a sanding surface. Or yeah, something. I'm just saying, like, that's just not a factor in laser cutting that I, I'm going to be as aware of. Like, it's just not going to be in the front of my mind because we do use them really frequently. Like, the concept of needing to collapse my laser cutter <laughs> is not something I'm going to be thinking about often, but I think there's probably a lot of people who it is. The cool kind of, like, random thing that it came with, what? which I don't really understand why, but it is kind of cool, oh, yeah. is it came with this little USB uh, grinding tool to clean up the edges. Oh, to clean up the edges. 
clean up like the edges of your laser cuts? Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Did you try it? I didn't have a bit on it. Oh, so, okay. All right, cool. I think we did it. All right. Until next time, my friends.